And this, this size, 24 by 30. It's in your Blick art box and it's ready to go. It's a big one. And what will it show? Well, it will show amazing things because this painting is going to be from inside you. This painting is going to be something that has meaning for you. Something that is so important for you that you are just raging to create it and reveal it to the world. That's what you're going to do. Something personal, something important for you, something from your imagination, something that has meaning, something that will use everything that you've learned from me over the last many weeks and months and something that will be unique. So it's a big canvas, so think about it. We've got a few weeks to work on this one. You've all done the self-portrait. You've all done the essay on Frida Kahlo. Now you can put, like she did, so much of herself into those paintings. In spite of the incredible adversity that she was experiencing in her life, dreadful pain and very difficult relationships and just total struggle. But the struggle can be transformed into something wonderful, which lives on to this day, whereas everyone else who probably was around Frida Kahlo we have long forgotten. She remains eternal through her paintings, which can now be seen in the Museum of Modern Art. I went to see the uh, work there, self-portrait and other stuff, and it's, it really is still very good. So anyway, that's what you're going to be doing over the next weeks. So you can start to plan it on a pencil drawing or whatever way you want to do. Now I'm going to just talk about the way I'm doing something here. I've been starting on this painting over the last uh, couple of uh, weeks, and it's this face, the hat is the first thing I started working on and as you can see it's pretty detailed and then this face which I'm kind of making up a kind of cross of a lot of faces that I've seen but trying to make them into some sort of magician of sorts there you are now, some of the time when I've been painting that, I bought these things from Amazon, so I've actually been using brushes like this. For me, I'm doing a very detailed work with this, so I'm in this different room, and uh, with these, look at those, these are magnifiers, so I'd be sitting there like this, even with a smaller brush. and getting right into it like that. Now, for some of you, this is impossible, but I noticed that in this class, we have some spectacularly talented students who could take it to a further degree. A lot of students who come through my classes manage to succeed beyond their wildest dreams and make quite a lot of good uh, cash sales with their paintings. So if you feel like you're one of those, this is your time. So getting that done, first of all, then I start to think about what goes into the background. I haven't really thought this out in detail yet. All I want to do is kind of make contact with something, first of all, psychologically, and that's this face. I want it to speak to me, and it's as if I'm wanting the painting to talk to me. That's maybe different from the way the other teachers are teaching you, but I think it's important that you have a communication with your work and that the work is also not all from you but some of it's coming from somewhere else and that is the process of art or else it's just boring it's, it would be like digital photography or something like that to be so much the same but what comes out of artists is so different and so unique that's what makes it really important for the human experience. So I'm just going to take another one up here. It's about the same size and this is one that I worked on before. 
And I actually base this on stuff that uh, comes from two, well actually three countries that I visited. And uh, this part is the first part I painted in detail. So everything was white, like in this canvas, that I, that in this one that I've just shown you. Everything in the background was white and then I painted that first of all. So I worked very, very slowly and meticulously on this diving suit. The diving suit I had seen in a museum of uh, maritime in uh, Barcelona in Spain. And it was a wonderfully strange suit with those eyes, you know, it was like something of an alien. So I worked on it very carefully. An alien, but an ancient alien, you know, like from the medieval times. So I worked on it very carefully and meticulously, building it up bit by bit. And then the wall behind it. Now, the important thing which I've been teaching you in the last weeks with the self-portrait is the shadows. And if you get shadows in a painting, it always makes the painting look more three-dimensional. So if you can get something like that in it, you can see how it sets that figure out from the wall and brings it to life, yeah? So that was that. After that, then I started to work out what was going to go behind here. The castle is from my home, which is in Scotland, where I was uh, brought up. And I'm Scottish, as you know. This castle is at the edge of the cliffs and it's got many legends and stories about it. If you know Scotland, you know, I can't think of what would you know from Scotland. Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a kind of Scottish filmed up there, you know, with all that sort of stuff. So you get the sense of it. So we've got this back here. And here we have this other diver sailing across the waters as if he's going to be taking something into this archway. Now I make all these things up as I come across them in my exploration. So it's a bit like writing a story. It's a bit like creating something, inventing something. So there he is going to sail through here. There's all this water. And then I wanted something to balance out the light of this jacket and the darkness of the background because it's in kind of twilight. So this I saw down in Florida and it's a um, spoonbill. They call them roseate spoonbills. It's a funny name, but they are amazing pink kind of light colors and they've got the amazing wings. So I put that in there to kind of lighten up the scene, lighten it up psychologically and physically. In other words, it's lighter here now with this balance of these two things. And it also kind of lightens up the psychological atmosphere, which is quite intense. So he's, he or she, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's coming out there. And uh, so that's that whole thing. So I'm kind of working with things that, you know, I want to create stuff that's never been seen before. As an artist, I can't see any point in doing the same old stuff. What's the point in copying from comics or copying anime or copying any of that stuff? You know, it's good if you're wanting to use that to learn to train yourself, but if you are wanting to be a creative artist, it's important to build up something new and develop something new. So these, I'm gonna do more talks like this and there's a few more things coming up where I'll talk about techniques. The techniques really will be, if you ask me a question by text or email, uh, if there's a technique that you're maybe stuck with, I could do a quick demonstration and put it up on the um, on the uh, film, you know, for you to look at. So um, that's it, you know. So think about that second painting. That's the one we're going to be working on now for the next weeks. 
until the finals. And the finals are going to be somewhere around, oh boy, let me see. About the, I can't remember, about the 20th of May or something like that. So you've got about a month. Okay, so that's it for this week. Start to plan what goes in the second painting. That's uh, the one that is the size 24 inches by 30 inches. So it's a big painting. And you can just be at the planning stage now, like I was with this thing that I showed you at the beginning. You know, what did I plan to start off with? I started off with something that interested me, which was that hat. So find something that interests you and see if you can take it for a walk. What do I mean by that? I mean, explore it, take it on a journey, make up things as you're going along, discover things, have that creative instinct that allows you to step into the unknown, to discover and explore, because without that, art is really boring. You have to have that explorative nature that wants to look into life, that wants to explore it and communicate something that's never been communicated before. Can you do that? Can you say something interesting? Can you say something new and psychologically developed? Can you show us something that gives us insight into life and your life? Is it possible that you can do that with the second painting? These are questions that you should ask yourself as an artist. Can you develop something new? Can you find something that makes people sit up and want to look at your painting and say, wow, that's absolutely amazing. That's your job. So let's see if you can do it. And the finals will be, uh, as I say, in um, the third week of May. And you will be showing your self-portrait, which you have finished. You should all have finished it by now. You'll be showing your second painting, which is this. You'll have done your essay. And uh, if I remember correctly, there's a quiz or something coming as well in the next week or two. So that's your stuff. Contact me if you have any questions, but we're going to just start this return from the spring break easy, where you're going to plan what to put on this big boy here. The blank canvas. Isn't that scary? It's big. It's 24 inches by 30 inches. I'm sure some of you have never worked on anything so big. So that's your job. Press on and paint. Sketch it out first and plan it. And then take it for a walk. Let's see what you can do. Okay, for now, I leave it. Adieu. Have a great week and uh, send your stuff to me. The, you know, the ideas. This is the week where you're going to sketch out your ideas and uh, you know maybe even start on the canvas if you're if you feel more uh, confident and email it or text it to me and uh, i can have a look at it and uh, i'll know that you're actually starting to get to grips with this second painting that's all this is about just now is starting to get yourself in the process of uh, planning what you're going to do and uh, there we are that's it. Here's something that was planned here. Wait a minute. This was an elaborate drawing before you go. There you are. There's one here. And that uh, probably will stay as a drawing. I mean, sometimes you do a drawing and it's just a drawing. It could be a plan for a painting or it could just remain as it is. So I'm probably just going to leave that as a drawing as I spent so much time on these figures. And uh, it's set in a railway station in my hometown of Wick. And it's based on a real person who turned up there, but I turned her into a man, uh, the American writer Truman Capote. A round of applause for that. <laughs> so uh, this drawing, I mean, some people do just want to do a very elaborate drawing. Okay, so start work on that. Let me see what you're planning. Send it off to me and uh, I'll give you my uh, ideas about how to progress or if it's looking maybe too complicated or, you know, you know, I'll just advise you. That's what the words are. Okay, so lovely to see you all. Take care and Bye for now.